So I'm now going to bisect the heart, um, which is bi means two, sect means to cut. So I'm going to cut the heart into two pieces using my scalpel. And you want to find its midline right down the middle as best you can and cut to the apex to separate the front of the heart from the back of the heart. Some people like to leave the heart attached at the top, and I am going to do that this time. You can also cut all the way through if you prefer. And I can already see all the strings that are part of the valves here. Okay, so when we open up the heart, the first question we want to ask ourselves is what is the front and what is the back of the heart? And you can close it to remind yourself that's the front, so this is the front piece. That's the back, so this is the back piece. But you should also be able to tell that this is the front because once it's opened, the left is going to be on the left side. So if this were my heart, my left is on the left when it's facing forward and my right is on my right. Speaking of which, you need to identify the left and the right side of the heart. So the left is the big side. It's always easy to tell, even if I couldn't see the front of this heart, I would know just by looking at this picture, the left is the huge side, and the left is going to be on both the front and the back. The right is the small side, and again, it's going to be on both the front and the back. So this is all right, this is all left, which means this big wall between the two sides is the septum. So you can see the septum is actually very thick, and it's there to keep the right and the left side separate, but it's also very muscular to help pump blood out through the ventricles. Now we're going to identify the four different chambers. So let's look for the atria first. To get to the right atrium, you actually have to sort of put your finger up in there. More so the right atrium is up at the top on both sides. More of it is actually on this part of the heart, so I can go pretty deep up here. And then the left atrium is going to be this area up here. You can see the auricle above it, and the atria only go as far as the valve. So there's a valve here separating the atrium from the ventricle. It's harder to tell the valve on the right side, but the valve is very obvious here. The ventricles are shaped like V's, and they point down. So this is the right ventricle, and the right ventricle does extend right here as well. And you can see the separation between the right atrium, because it's up here above the valve, and the right ventricle. The ventricles are much, much bigger than the atria. On the left side, we see the left atrium, and then this huge left ventricle, biggest chamber of the heart is the left ventricle, and it's shaped like a V. So we have our valves. Your atrioventricular valves are the only ones you'll be able to see, the valves between the atrium and the ventricle. So which valve is found on the left side of the heart, between the left atrium and the left ventricle? That's known as the mitral valve or the bicuspid valve. The valve is these flaps and strings. So the way it works is the strings pull on the flaps to open and close the valve. On the right side, it's harder to see the valve, but we're looking for stringiness. The valve is pretty busted up, but this right here is the valve on the right side. So what's the valve between the right atrium and the right ventricle? That's the tricuspid valve. And it lets, both of those valves let the blood go from the atrium into the ventricle and keep it from coming back. You're not probably going to be able to find the aortic valve or the pulmonary valve. Those are the semilunar valves, and they are very hard to locate during a dissection. The next part is the papillary muscle. So the papillary muscle is what you're going to see inside the ventricles. It's kind of shiny, and it has these strings it's what tugs at the valves. These strings are called the chordae tendinae. 
And when someone says, you're tugging at my heartstrings, this is what they're referring to. That phrase just means you're making me sad. But these are the heart strings, the chordae tendinae, that the papillary muscle pulls on to open and close the valves. The next step is to locate the blood vessels. And I really like this part. To do it, I like to use my finger and figure out where the blood is coming in and where it's going out. So we know that going into the left atrium of the heart are the pulmonary veins coming back from the lungs. So what I do is I find the left atrium and I find the opening and it's right here. It's really been cut off but the opening into the left atrium is where those pulmonary veins were leading in and it looks like we can maybe even see, nope that's just part of the um, outside tissue. So pulmonary veins came together, they come in the left atrium. Then we go into the left ventricle, and out of the left ventricle, we're going to exit through the aorta. So I just trace my finger, and boom, I was right about where the aorta was. It was this big vessel that we saw externally. For the right side, the openings are smaller, but we need to find the right atrium and the blood is going to come in through the vena cava. So I'll try the front of the heart and see if I can exit. Ooh, I think I can, but it's tight. Okay, so where my finger is coming, this is the vena cavas. The vena cavas lead into the right atrium. There are actually two, but they come together before they get to the heart into a single vena cava. So you have the, the superior from the upper part of the body and the inferior from the lower part and they meet up and they enter the right atrium. And then exiting the right ventricle, we are going to have the pulmonary arteries which lead to the lungs. And you have to figure out which part of the heart you're gonna be able to get to those from. You will hit the pulmonary valve with your finger as you do this and you have to make your way out. So there is the pulmonary artery. Again, it's gonna branch left and right, but they've cut off the part where it branches. So the heart has four major chambers, four major valves, four major vessels, and we have located almost all of those things. Again, not the semilunar valves, um, because you can't really see those in a dissection, and then the different tissues of the heart. And when you are done with your dissection, you need to just take the heart, put it back in the bag, and put it into the trash. Then you need to clean off your scalpel thoroughly. So I like to clean it before I remove the scalpel, but I'll actually show you how to or before I remove the blade, sorry. I'll show you how to remove the scalpel blade, but I don't want a bunch of the tissue parts going into my blade container because that'll get gross. So I'm just gonna clean it off as best I can. This is my blade container. You slide it in with this notch part face up. Then you push down with your thumb and pull, and the blade will actually pop off and go into the container and then you want to thoroughly wash and dry your scalpel so that you can reattach another blade later on. The final step is to rinse out the pan. I just rinse it thoroughly. If there are any chunks, you need to wipe those chunks out and put them into the trash can so we don't get any chunks in the sink to clog the sink. And then rinse the pan thoroughly and set it upside down on the lab table to dry. The final step is glove removal, and to do this, you want to grab the outside edge of your glove without touching your skin, peel it down a bit, then grab the other one, peel it down a bit, and your goal is to basically turn your gloves inside out without actually touching any of the glove, and then you can throw them away inside out and wash your hands.